the most naturally talented English footballer of his generation. A football genius. The crackerjack of English football. Paul Gascoigne. The fat 16-year-old apprentice, as Glenn Roder once labelled him, had become an FA Youth Cup winner whilst at Newcastle, and he had ended his tenure in the North East in 1988 with a place in the PFA Team of the Year and a PFA Young Player of the Year award. Tottenham and Manchester United were matched with a £2.2 million offer and met Gascoigne's wage demands. With a transfer promise from Gascoigne, Alex Ferguson took off on his summer holiday to Malta. But upon his return, Gascoigne was a Tottenham Hotspur footballer. The dealmaker for Gascoigne was Spurs' £70,000 offer to buy his family a new house. Gascoigne was the star of many summers for his national side, from the Italia 90 displays to the goal against Scotland at Euro 96. Gascoigne enjoyed a career that featured a domestic treble in 96 with Glasgow Rangers, a 1991 FA Cup crown with Tottenham Hotspur and an induction into the Hall of Fames for England and Rangers in 2002 and 2006 respectively. Stints at Lazio, Middlesbrough, Everton, Burnley, as well as a year in China and at Boston United followed before Gazza retired in 2004. Meanwhile, Alex Ferguson took Manchester United to the top of the mountain both domestically and continentally. Since his retirement, Paul Gascoigne has gained infamy for off-field behaviour like George Best before him. But let's slide the doors open, gauge the effect of the butterfly and rewrite the football in history books. Here's what would have happened if... Paul Gascoigne signed for Manchester United. The best player of his era, stated Alex Ferguson. After a £2.2 million acquisition in the summer of 1988, Paul Gascoigne was his player. The signing of the teenager didn't give Manchester United the immediate success. Luckily, Ferguson's dismissal was staved thanks to United's appearance in the FA Cup final in 1989. They would lose in extra time to Everton, but the following season they went one further with a replay win over Crystal Palace at Wembley. The success for his club bred success for his country. England barreled through the tournament with wins over Belgium and Cameroon and were left with West Germany in Turin. Andreas Bremer's free kick on the hour mark bounced off the England wall and cleared for a throw-in. Gary Lineker struck the winner 10 minutes from time. Paul Gascoigne escaped through the match without seeing a yellow card due to a lack of extra time period. The World Cup was won in Sir Bobby Robson's final fling at the England job in Rome. Another 1-0 win, another Gary Lineker winner, this time from the spot with 5 minutes remaining. Manchester United were inching closer to league success. Since Paul Gascoigne signed in 1988, the Red Devils had snaked up the league from 6th to 3rd and in 1991, second place only to Arsenal. The central midfield partnership of Robson and Gazza was irresistible on the continent, providing Mark Hughes with the match-winning goals in the Cup Winners' Cup Final of 1991 over Barcelona and the subsequent 1992 UEFA Cup Final over Torino. Meanwhile, Manchester United were about to embark on the longest title winning streak in English football. It ebbed from the old generation of Steve Bruce, Brian Robson and Mark Hughes to the new generation of the class of 92. Gascoigne was a rod right through both. United snatched the final old first division title from Leeds United in May 1992 before winning in 93 from Villa, 94 and 95 from Blackburn and 96 and 97 from Newcastle. By which point in the spring of 1997, Paul Gascoigne had conquered all but one competition in world football. Gazza was approaching his testimonial year at Manchester United and made his 350th United appearance in a 2-0 win in Dortmund in a Champions League semi-final. The final against Juventus was approaching. Gascoigne's United had finally broken their streak of five successive European Cup semi-final losses, losses which were against Marseille, AC Milan and Juventus. A double from Gazza cemented his first European Cup and United's second in a 3-1 win over Juventus in Munich. For his national side, Gazza had completed the generational achievement of a World Cup and European Championship double. It wasn't to come at Euro 92, despite Gazza's best efforts, that featured three goals in a semi-final effort. After a quarter-final showing at the 1994 World Cup, Gazza returned to prominence at England's home tournament in 1996. Tabloids were frothing at the mouth with the likes of Stephen Manu and Teddy Sheringham and Alan Shearer in the so-called dentist chair in a pre-tournament tour. Shearer would recreate the dentist chair with his goal in a win over Scotland at Wembley. Even that couldn't overshadow the sheer genius that followed, Gazza's volley to make it 2-0. Gazza would poke in the opening goal against Germany in the semi-final before a 3-0 thrashing of the Czech Republic meant England had won their first European Championship. Back at Old Trafford, United's domestic dominance was broken up by Arsenal and Arsene Wenger with a league and cup double in 1998. The response was of course United's famous treble. Roy Keane and Paul Scholes were both suspended for the 1999 Champions League final but the sparingly used midfield partnership of Paul Gascoigne and Nicky Butt drove United to a late 2-1 win over Bayern Munich in the Nou Camp. Gazza, under instruction from fresh United Sir Alex Ferguson, wound his international career down to a close at Euro 2000 in the Netherlands and Belgium. Gazza would partner club teammate Paul Scholes, keeping Paul Ince and Dennis Wise out of the starting eleven. England held on to wins against Portugal and Germany. 
as well as a draw with Romania. England had made the semi-finals of the previous World Cup, losing to hosts and eventual winners France. And in 2000, it was another semi-final for England, and yet another match against France. The exception from France 98 was a Gaza screamer from 30 yards that clinched England a 1-0 win and the Euro 2000 final. And in that final, a golden goal from the also-retiring Alan Shearer, which clinched England a second successive European Championships with a win against Italy. In the twilight of his career, Gaza claimed two more Champions League titles, racked up his ninth Premier League in 2003, as well as nine domestic cups. He would return to international prominence in 2002. Steven Gerrard was ruled out of the World Cup in Japan and South Korea through injury, which left Sven Goran Eriksson at a loss. Gaza needed very little persuasion and it instantly paid off. He provided Michael Owen with two goals in the opener against Sweden that effectively clinched first position in the group of death that also featured Argentina and Nigeria. Senegal, Turkey and the Great Brazil were topped in the knockout stage before Germany were beaten in the World Cup final. Gaza returned to international retirement following a second World Cup win. He was retired professionally in 2004 and three years later assisted in the youth setup at United where he would remain until Ferguson's retirement in 2013. Let's take it to the winners and losers. Paul Gascoigne, winner. The man himself prolonged his career at the top, didn't gain the infamy that his would-be alcoholism brought him post-career. Manchester United, winners, because they became the most successful English club in the European Cup with five titles by 2004. France, losers. The generational achievement of winning the World Cup and Euros double wasn't achieved thanks to a Euro 2000 semi-final defeat to England. And our final loser, Tottenham. 1991 might have been a year ending in one, but they didn't win the FA Cup, losing in the semi-final to Arsenal due to a lack of Paul Gascoigne. Is this the alternative universe you expected? Please let us know in the comments section if you have any suggestions for a future scenario. Thanks for watching and don't forget to smash a like on the video and subscribe to What If Football for more alternate football universes.